Hi and welcome to this uh, short video on uh, demonstrating the use of Revit integration with uh, the Master Series Structural Engineering software. So what we're going to start off with, we're going to take a, a model from Revit Structure, take it through to the Master Series Structural software, make some changes and do some round trip bidirectional integration back again to Revit Structure showing the uh, the way in which we can manage that type of change. The uh, the initiation of the link can be started either from Revit or from Master Series, so a new Revit model can be created from Master Series. However, in this instance, we're going the other direction. So starting from Revit, coming to our add-in tab, Master Series Revit Link Manager, and because we were doing a bi-directional link, we're going to initiate the link here. However, one can simply send a unidirectional one-time exchange to Master Series to create a Master Series model, which is where the, uh, the relationship ends. However, for continued uh, exchanging of information between the two models, we're going to create a new bidirectional link. So this is a central managed link file, which controls the uh, exchange of information from both ends. With this file, we can simply say that we want to submit all the structural elements of the model to the link. We can, of course, say that we want to link just to selected elements. However, um, this is often best achieved by disabling this, the analytical component of a structural um, component or a structural framing or a structural column component uh, rather than having to come in here and, and choose which elements specifically you want to include in the link. So linking with the full model, submitting the model to the link, giving us a little summary of what actually was exchanged. Now in this instance we do have analytical information such as member end release and support conditions and they, and they will all be brought across to the master series. So let's take a, a look at the master series and we're again initiating and connecting to a new master series model. So import from master series Revit link manager and we're going to connect to the link that we've just made and there we have it simply clicking on open and it's recognizing in our status here that it's already linked to uh, the Revit model that we've just been working with. So we want to create a new model from this link. A couple of options here. Uh, in our Revit model, if we just flick back to that, we saw that we had a concrete floor slab, which is actually a composite metal deck. We also have some uh, concrete shear, shear walls up in this corner of the building. We do have some options concerning those when we do our import. If this were a flat slab type structure, I may indeed want to model that slab as a finite element surface. However, in this instance, I'll simply want that slab coming in as an area loading surface. So we certainly don't want to model it as finite element. We will, however, allow our walls to come in as finite element. And we have options here to continue the syncing of the, uh, the Y coordinate in Revit to the Y coordinate in the master series model. So we will extract that. Um, file and when it's finished we'll load that straight into the master series. So here we have our model turning on our advanced graphics on our 3D. We can see the structure coming in with all of the cellular beams that we have in Revit structure with the plates, the UBs and all the section sizes coming across. Also we can see our finite element modeled walls appearing over here and the composite floor slab that was in Revit has now been brought in and set up as an area loading surface together with the correct orientation of span of that surface as dictated in Revit. So what we want to do now is make some changes and then try and bring that back across to Revit. Let's just come into our editing environment And perhaps we may have decided to go to our member properties. And this element here, which is currently a UB, will continue to change that and make it actually a built up asymmetrical type section. So a 450 deep section with a 10 mil thick web. This is our top flange at the minute. And let's actually make it asymmetrical by making the bottom flange a 300 by 15 section. We'll make some further section changes. Uh, we may have decided that this element here, as a UB section, we would actually like to uh, put a plate on the bottom of it. 
So let's put a 10 mil plate at a 75 millimeter projection. And in fact, we'll make, we'll say the projection is only on the uh, on the right side, going in towards the structure. And we can see that in the diagram here at the end, we can see the uh, the plate coming into play there. Some further section changes we have here at the minute. Uh, a C, uh, an RHS type section. Uh, we may turn around and say, well, actually, we'll, we'll go for a different type of RHS here. We'll determine that we can get away with a slightly lighter section, so we'll change that. And finally, in terms of section changes, I'm going to make some of these rafter members here coming in to more of a portalized, double haunched type section. So with a double haunch, specifying the length of the haunch, let's just go for a one meter long haunch with a, a double depth section at the haunch ends and I'm just going to copy that across to several other members there to repeat that across. Fantastic. Let's make a few more changes. We're going to make some changes to the geometry. I'm just going to change the positions of some of the nodes to demonstrate that type of change. Putting this on plan and when doing all of these nodes I'm going to change them in the Z direction by a further 0.5 meters and proceed with that change to shift that little cantilever section outwards. Finally I'm going to introduce some new members so let's just go to geometry to find new members as a snap grid type of approach and I'd like to introduce some new bracing members so let's go for some CHS type sections something in around the 100 millimeter diameter range and we'll make them uh, bracing type members that are perhaps tension only and also released at the ends. So let's just put in some cross bracing quickly in that location. So we're in good shape. We're going to send these changes, changes back to Revit. So exiting from the editing environment, saving our changes. And let's just go into export, Revit structure, one final thing just before we actually go into the link manager is I just want to check Revit does distinguish between what is a sloping beam member and a brace member in its own particular way and we can see here that these two new bracing members that I've put in it is beneficial to add them to that group so they do come through as a proper brace type member in Revit structure. So let's go into the link manager now and you can see it's a very similar type of interface that you get to the Revit. Because now that the link is set up, the exchange of information from one side to another is very simple. Simply a matter of submitting the changes to the link at one side and updating them from the other side. And the vice, the, the opposite is true if we're taking changes from Revit to master series. So submitting the data to the link. Let's get ourselves back to Revit. I'm going to make my life a little bit difficult here by making a change to one of the elements that I've already changed in master series. If you remember I changed this guy here to uh, 250 RHS. I'm going to turn around here now and change him to uh, a PFC. And let's see what sort of difficulties that makes for us and how we can uh, to get around that. So we will come to our add-in, Revit Structure Link Manager. And we can see here, if we scroll down a little bit, that we are indeed connected to the uh, $5 master frame file. And it's telling us that Master Series Revision Number 1 hasn't been yet imported to Revit, which is why this button is active here, telling us that we have some changes awaiting. So let's update the model from the link. And now it's listing out everything for us in terms of what changes we expect to see. So it's telling us we've got two new members to be created. And now it's detailing the changes that are about to be made. And we can see here we've got a, a universal beam in Revit, which is going to be changed to a universal beam plus a plate. And if we want to see where that actually is occurring at, we can zoom to selected and see what's going on there. Now this is an interesting one. We can actually move between what we call conflicts. And the conflict is where we have a change which has been made on both sides. 
and we can see that currently the sections of PFC originally when it was sent to master series it was a 300 RHS and master series changed it to a 250 RHS so by check leaving this box checked that means that we were, are accepting the change that's coming through from the master series and indeed we can scroll through this list and see other types of changes uh, coming across we can see here the changes that are being made to the shifting of those elements uh, all the way down uh, obviously there are quite a few of those elements and then also the uh, some these elements here which are being changed to haunched type sections so let's just say okay to that and that will automatically stitch in those changes to the existing Revit model. Okay, we can safely ig ignore these uh, brace error warnings. They are generally very small and, and nothing to be concerned about. And finally, it's telling us what's been done. No elements deleted, two elements added, 32 elements moved, and uh, there was no B or rotations in member cross-section rotations changed either. So we'll close that. Now straight away we can see the uh, haunched sections coming in. Now this is actually a very important feature and uh, something that we uh, worked a lot to improve on our 2014 version of the Master Series Revit Link Manager. Revit itself out of the box doesn't have any direct families which represent haunched sections. You end up having to cut them and splice them and do things like that yourself. Our 2014 version of Master Series, we introduced about 34 new Revit families, which fills the void between missing families in Revit uh, in relation to the types of sections that we can easily handle in Master Series. So haunched sections are just one of them. We can look at this haunched section and we can see with my property window that we can do things like turn off the right haunch or the left haunch uh, very easily and it's all nicely controlled and a very well set up family to allow you to, to control the, uh, and draw haunching type members. If you remember also that uh, we put in a plated section again out of the box Revit uh, doesn't exactly handle that in a way that uh, we would prefer so again we've got our plate coming on it is a little difficult to see there but there certainly is a plate on the bottom of that UV type section uh, in addition to that we've also got um, our built up section coming through there we also have our brace map our new bracing elements coming through which is the new elements that we generated and also the changes that we implemented out here are coming through now if we click on any one of these members and look at its properties the structural framing element master series itself has extra properties to a, to a member and had we analyzed the structure in master series we could have actually had all the analysis results for the ends of the members coming through as well now we do have a few extra items here such as the status which tells us that uh, the geometry of this element has changed now there is a nice way to view some of those changes in a very uh, summarized type of fashion and that's using a, a particular view with a set of filters. Now I've created actually a template from a previous view I've created so what I want to do is take a 3D view and I'm just going to duplicate this view at the moment and I'm just going to rename that view. Let's just right click here and say rename and we'll call it master series status. And up here I'm going to say, and I'm going to apply a template to that current view. And this template is something I have previously created, and apply that. And this does a lovely thing of taking the template, or taking the members, and looking at the master series status on any one of the members, and colouring them according to their values. So that we can see clearly the members that have changed, whether it be in property, or geometry, or in green. In fact, you could further refine that to colour the members that have just changed in geometry one colour, and sections another color but we can quite clearly here see here the red members which are new this member is green in fact let's come in and hide the uh, floor plate so we can easily see all the sections so we'll just come in here and we'll say we're going to knock out the floors there apply that and we can see the changes that have also been made 
to uh, the various elements uh, of of the of the, uh, of the structure. So this is very very convenient. Now just having if you want to get down into a bit more detail of that view, uh, the filtering is done simply by over here creating these two new filters and these are filters which have simply been set up to say that for structural framing elements and structural column elements and looking at MS status and if it begins with the word changed it gets colored in green and likewise we have a similar filter for the new which colors the items in red so that's something you might want to take five minutes to set up and you can use again and again as a template that you can apply to an existing view. Likewise, I said we can take, take some of these changes and send them back to master series. So let's do that. And this time we're just going to make some simple section changes yet again and send some of those back to the master series. So let's take this section here and we'll simply change that from one size of a UB to another. Back to our add-ins, Revit Link Manager and submit those changes to that link again and now it's much easier every time we want to make a change it's simply submitting to the link and updating from the link so back to the link manager we have a change setting waiting for us and update from the link and it tells us what's going to be changed there so we're happy with that we'll just simply say OK and that change will be applied there also so there we have it, some quick round trip integration from master series to Revit structure, uh, all in a few simple clicks. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions on this, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Bye-bye.